starter Pokemon, or as the Pokemon company has been calling them recently, first partner Pokemon, are the Pokemon that you start your journey with. In most cases, you are presented with the option between a grass type, a fire type, and a water type. They will evolve twice and are a strong member to keep for your entire journey. While that initial choice will grant you what should be your only one, sometimes the game lets you get some extras along the way. The first, and probably the most well-known example of this, is Pokemon Yellow. Your initial starter in Yellow is not one of the traditional starters, but instead, you get a Pikachu. However, it's not the only starter Pokemon you can get. When you reach Cerulean City, there's an NPC in one of the houses that will give you a Bulbasaur if you have good friendship with your Pikachu. Going north of the city, just past Nugget Bridge, there's a trainer that will give you a Charmander. You can get two of the Kano starters back to back before you even fight the second gym. To finish off the trio, you can get a Squirtle from Officer Jenny in Vermilion City after beating Lieutenant Surge. Three badges in and you can have all three of the Kanto starters on your journey. The next time where you can get extra starters is an interesting case, as for we are looking at the GameCube title Pokemon Coliseum. In Coliseum, due to every battle being a double battle, you start with an Umbreon and an Espeon. You start the game with two starters, but that's not all for this game, as early on you have the choice between fighting a red, green, or blue trainer. Each of these trainers have a second stage Johto starter, having their type correspond to the trainer's color. You are able to snag one of these three starters to have them join your team. Well, you can only choose one of these for now. In the post game, you'll be able to get the other two, allowing for you to get all three. Our next stop is in Colosseum's sequel, Pokemon XD Gales of Darkness. This time, you only start with a single Pokemon, with that being Eevee, and while there's no shadow starters to snag in this title, there is instead the base forms of the Johto starters available as gifts for completing Mount Battle. You can pick one of these starters for accomplishing the feat. However, you can complete it again to get the others. Well, these ones are out of the way. They also do come with the ultimate moves, which are usually only able to be learned by their final evolutions. Returning to the mainline games, we come to Pokemon Emerald, where you can receive one of the Johto starters from Professor Birch as a reward for completing the Hoenn Pokedex. Nothing super special about these ones, but it is a nice little reward. Man, Gen 3 was really big on giving out the Johto starters. Our next game to give out extra starters is Heart Gold and Soul Silver, where after beating Red, Professor Oak will congratulate you and give you one of the Kanto starters. But that's not all, for you can find Steven Stone inside of Silphco, and he will present you with one of the Hoenn starters. For a bit, this was like the pinnacle of extra starters in games, giving you access to three different generations of starters. Skipping all the way to Gen 6 with X and Y, we go back to having extra starters being presented within the story. As when you first reach Lumio City, Professor Sycamore will present you with one of the three Kanto starters, alongside its respective Megastone. Upon beating the game, Shauna will offer to trade you the base form of whatever starter she picked, so either a Chespin, Fennekin, or a Froki. X and Y also featured an area called the Friend Safari, which let you visit little patches of grass with a couple Pokemon in it based on your friends list. It was possible to find the middle stages of both the Kanto Trio and the Kalos Trio within the Friend Safari, and they even had the chance to have their hidden abilities. For a last note of these games, while it is no longer active, around the launch of X and Y there was a mystery gift that gave out a Torchic with a Blaziken Knight, allowing for early adopters to have three starters on their team throughout their journey. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire pumped up the numbers a bit, for after reaching certain milestones, you must save Birch again, and you can receive a Johto starter, a Unova starter, and a Sinnoh starter. While locked to the postgame, it serves as a nice callback to the Johto starter from Emerald, and allows for all starter Pokemon to be obtained in Gen 6. Moving on to the 7th generation, we switch up the method for getting extra starters, for now we must catch them all instead of getting gifts. In Sun and Moon, you can use the island scan feature to find the Johto starters on Mele Mele Island, which is Chikorita on Friday, Cyndaquil on Sunday, and Totodile on Monday. While on Pony Island, you can find the fully evolved Unova starters, Superior on Thursday, Embor on Saturday, and Semarot on Friday. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon takes this to the next level, as through island scan you can get the Kanto starters, Bulbasaur on Route 2 on Fridays, Charmander on Route 3 on Sundays, and Squirtle in Seaward Cave on Mondays. The Hoenn starters are next, being able to be found in their middle stages, Grovile on Route 5 on Fridays, Combuskin on Route 8 on Tuesdays, and Marshtomp at Brooklet Hill on Saturdays. The Sinnoh starters are also available in their middle stages, with Grottle at Ula Ula Meadow on Wednesdays, Monferno on Route 11 on Fridays, and Prinflup on Route 16 on Tuesdays. As you may expect, the Kalos starters also make an appearance, being in their fully evolved states. Chestnut is found on Executor Island on Thursdays, Delphox at Ancient Pony Path on Saturdays, and Greninja in the Pony Wilds on Fridays. The Alola games let you catch every past starter in the wild, which is wild. Not only being able to get multiple of all these starters, but being able to get them in a wide range of Pokeballs. Finishing off Gen 7 here, we have Let's Go. 
Depending on the version you pick, your starter Pokemon is either Pikachu or Eevee, being the latter's first time being a starter in a mainline game. Being kinda remakes of Yellow version, you are able to get Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle in the same locations as they were found back then. But now, they have requirements of having caught a certain amount of Pokemon. You need to have caught 30 for Bulbasaur, 50 for Charmander, and 60 for Squirtle. Not only are there these gift starters, but all three can also be found in the wild. Bulbasaur is a rare spawn in Viridian Forest, Charmander is a rare spawn on Routes 3 and 4, as well as in the Rock Tunnel, and Squirtle is a rare spawn on Routes 24 and 25, as well as being found in the Seafoam Islands. And to note, Charizard is also available in the wild, being found when flying above routes while in the post-game. With Gen 7 wrapped up, it's time to move on to Gen 8. Starting off with Sword and Shield, we have Charmander, available as a gift in Leon's room once you reach the post-game. There was also Gigantamax Charizard raids that allowed you to catch Charizard. That's pretty much it for the base game, but moving on to the Isle of Armor DLC, we are presented with a choice between a Bulbasaur and a Squirtle at the dojo. Gigantamax Venusaur and Blastoise also become possible raids. Also in the Isle of Armor are Alolan Diglets you are tasked with finding. Once you have found 100 of them, you are presented with either a Rowlet, Litten, or Poplio, the one you receive being the one of the matching type of the Galar starter you chose at the beginning of your adventure. The Alola starters were also available to be caught in raids during a limited time raid event, and all three stages of all three Kanto starters have been available throughout different raid events. Finally, in the Crown Tundra DLC, within the Dynamax adventures, you can find the middle stage Kanto starters alongside the middle and final stages of the Hoenn starters. The next game on our list is Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. These games only contain the first 493 Pokemon and allows you to catch all starters from the first four generations. That's right, you can even catch the Sinnoh starters in this game. Once you obtain the national decks by seeing the 150 Pokemon in the Sinnoh regional decks and talking to Professor Rowan, the starter Pokemon will now roam around in the underground. They are a bit tricky to find, but you are able to catch as many as you would like. Next up is Legends Arceus. Being set in Sinnoh's past, all the Sinnoh starters are able to be found in the wild and able to be caught whenever. In the post game, you can get the two starters you didn't pick in the beginning by talking to Professor Lavington, as well as all three will now spawn in space-time distortions. And once you complete the Daybreak update, the Hisui starters will also be able to have outbreaks within the massive mass outbreaks. Our current final stop on our journey is Scarlet and Violet. No extra starters to be found within the base game. However, there have been numerous starters able to be caught through the 7 star raids. However, those are all limited time events. In the Teal Mask DLC, you can find Jock in Kitakami and he'll give you an egg that will hatch into one of the Sinnoh starters at random. In the Indigo Disc, all starters from Gens 1 through 8 are available to be caught inside the Terrarium. However, they are only available once you buy the upgrade for each biome. In the Savannah biome, you can find Charmander, Totodile, Snivy, Fennekin, Rowlet, and Sobble. In the Coastal biome, there is Bulbasaur, Chikorita, Mudkip, Froakie, Poplio, and Grookey. The Polar biome has Cyndaquil, Torchic, Chimchar, Piplup, Oshawott, and Scorbunny. And finally, the Canyon biome contains Squirtle, Trico, Turtwig, Tepig, Chespin, and Litten. And that should be, as of now, every game that lets you get extra starter Pokemon. It is always super exciting when a game lets you get more than one, and it always feels like it's some rare occurrence, but yet, it's happened in every game since X and Y. The starter Pokemon are a very special set of Pokemon, as for pretty much everyone, one of them is their first Pokemon. Also why in a post-Dexit world, it's annoying when a game like Sword and Shield doesn't have all of them. These Pokemon mean a lot to a lot of people, and while not being able to have every Pokemon in every game now, having at least these ones is more than justified. With all that said, I want to thank you all for watching. I would love to hear from you below, even if it's just what your favorite starter is. As always, a like and subscribe would be very much appreciated, as it really helps out the channel. This has been Big Blast 99 and I hope you all have yourselves a goddamn good one.